How you guys doing? Man, I, I really look forward to working with you guys for sure. Uh, really happy to be here and just looking forward to joining this team, joining this culture. What Coach Narduzzi has uh, built up here is phenomenal. So just glad to be a part of it. Open up for questions for you guys. What was the, uh, what was the draw here and kind of how did the process start the connection between you and uh, What was the draw here? I would just say Coach Narduzzi, number one, and uh, just what he's built here. Last year, they were the ACC champions and the culture, the people that are here, I was really drawn to the people personally. Uh, not that the place that I left had great people also, but uh, having that first conversation with Coach Narduzzi over the phone, it, was, it just felt right. It felt like a good fit. So that, that, that was really it for me. And it just took off from there. I was curious, what's uh, Coach Narduzzi like in a job interview? Oh man, he's, he's awesome. He's, he's awesome. What you see is what you get. Uh, Coach Narduzzi is very consistent in who he is, and uh, I have a tremendous respect for that. And uh, he, was, he was very honest, very direct, told me exactly what he has built here and what he sees for the future, and also what he wants in a receiver coach and an assistant coach. And uh, the, the, the two sides, myself and him, it just, it just matched. It really lined up perfectly. What was the toughest question he asked you? toughest question he asked me I would say when he when he offered the job because as you know I was a alma mater Rutgers is my alma mater I played there uh, coach with coach Chiano played for coach Chiano and to leave the school like that's home that's where my heart is it'll always be there but um when he offered a job it, to me it was like man this is real and if I do decide to go to Pitt I know that some people may not take that well, but at the end of the day, I have to do what's right for my family and also myself and my career, and I felt like this was the best place for me right now. Well, those decisions are always hard in the long term, but in the short term, how much of a draw was it to come here and work with a guy like Gaddis and Jordan Man, the, the resume that, that Jordan has built is phenomenal. And that's just hats off to Coach Narduzzi, uh, the coach that coached them last year. They all did a phenomenal job, a collective effort. And uh, I just want to come here and help Jordan and the rest of the receiver unit just elevate their game. Uh, that's my job. And we have a new uh, offensive coordinator and Coach Signetti, who is a great coach, very experienced. And I'm, I'm looking forward to teaching these guys the offense and also elevating their game and having a, a tremendous spring ball capped by a tremendous season. Oh, they've, they've been phenomenal. He, he has so much wisdom, so much experience. He's been at so many different places, coached under great coaches and with great coaches. And for me to be in that offensive staff room with somebody like that is, is phenomenal. Number one, I get to learn from him. Number two, to actually have a seat at the table and have a voice and be part of those conversations are, is, is pretty awesome. Stories about how tight your receiver room was at Rutgers. How would you describe your style and then how you interact with your guys? Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. We had built something pretty special in the receiver room at Rutgers. And uh, coming here, they have something very similar, very similar. And uh, my style, I just try to tell the guys, everybody's running their own race. So don't worry about the next man. Worry about yourself. How can you get better today? Like, we, we're all here for the same common goal, and that's to win a national championship, first by winning an ACC championship. And we have to do that together. So everybody has to be rowing, rowing in the same direction. Uh, as far as my style, I'm very open, very direct. I just try to be real and honest with the players. And just try to build those relationships because if you have a strong relationship with somebody, it's, it's open, it's honest, and the players will really play for you that way. When they, when they know that you care and, that, and then they begin to trust you. Are you do birthday cakes and things like that? Oh, I'm, I'm huge on that. As soon as I got here, I asked uh, John Ford, I said, can you shoot me all the wide receiver cell phone numbers, number one, so I could get in contact with them. Number two, I need their birthdays because 
we all were born on a, a certain day, you know, and it feels good to be celebrated and acknowledged. And so, some people's upbringing, sometimes you didn't have birthdays or maybe you didn't get a birthday cake or whatever the situation is. So I, I, I look forward to bringing that here for sure and celebrating the wide receiver unit. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm a big. <laughs> I don't bake them myself. I don't. I don't. I don't have that many skills. But uh, I'm a big ice cream cake guy, Carvel preferably. So I do. We do the Carvel cakes, and sometimes we'll throw a picture on there. Part of your, your title is Cascade Coordinator. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. Is that almost like a co-offensive coordinator? What kind of role will you have? Yes. Uh, so Coach Signetti, he offered me the job here as the wide receiver coach slash pass game coordinator, and uh, what that means is just. Number one, I have, I'm responsible for the wide receiver unit. And number two, uh, just more responsibility when it comes to the pass game, more of a, more of a voice, more of an input. And I, I look forward to collabing with Coach Signetti and also learning from Coach Signetti. But uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the offense that we're building here for this upcoming season. Is there a lot of like, like prep through the week when you have like extra duties as far as mm -hmm. So this is a first for me as well. So I, t I can't answer those questions directly, but in the meetings that we have had thus far, uh, it just feels good to have open dialogue. And uh, I, I would assume that I would be definitely looking at more of the defense and the back end, the pass, <clears throat> the DB structure and things of that sort and how we can attack them. He told us last week that he felt very welcomed by the group and said he felt that there was a lot of love already in the receiver room. What was, what's been your interpretation of just how they've welcomed him, how they're welcoming you, and how you guys, like, how you guys have been breaking the ice? Yeah, uh, because when you're a new player or a new coach, it's always that feeling of being the new student at school. We've all dealt with that before. And uh, everyone in this building has been very welcoming. As soon as you walk in here, people are smiling. People are happy. People are happy to be around each other, to work with each other. The energy in this building is phenomenal. And uh, that's, that's what Coach Narduzzi has built here. It's about the people. And like, like uh, Kanata said, they are very welcoming. And I know you guys are speaking to Addison Copeland, who was uh, mid-year here. And uh, for him to come from high school and make that transition, I feel like the coaches, myself, and the players are going to help him with that transition because it's not easy. It's not. You coming from high school to now being thrown in the fire, but uh, once he gets his feet up under him and with the help of myself and the players, it just it just makes everything easier. And Do you anticipate having more responsibility in any previous job you've had because of that extra title you have? Uh, I, I assume so. I assume so. Uh, Getting that title for me was, was very important. Uh, it, with more responsibility to me, like you, you gotta be ready for that. And I felt like I was, and that's kind of why I'm here. I felt like I wanted to take a step forward. I wanted to take a step up. And uh, Coach Narduzzi has given me that opportunity, which I'm very grateful for. An advantage you think coming in with the first year offensive coordinator to pit at least where you guys can kind of build something together as opposed to the other way? Absolutely. Absolutely. Coming here with Coach Signetti at the same time where everyone's learning the offense so I don't have to feel like I'm behind. I told the wide receivers today, listen, we're all in this together. We're all learning this together. And as far as our offensive staff, we're building it together. So like you said, it did time up pretty well. During your uh, playing career, I don't think you ever lost a game, <laughs> but it seemed like there was always sort of a bit of a rivalry between them. Do you remember having a particular dislike for Pitt at that time? Is it kind of funny now, um, this many years later, that you're you know, wearing a Pitt logo? And yeah, so going to Rutgers, it was the Big East at that time, and uh, Coach Dave Weinstead was the head coach for Pitt at the time, and um, we, we crossed paths in Tampa Bay. He's a phenomenal person, phenomenal coach. Great, great energy. And uh, going against his teams, one thing you knew after that game, you're going to be bruised up, you're going to be sore, because phys Pitt was very physical. Like, that was, that was one thing you knew, that they were going to be very physical. I remember, I remember specific names like H.B. Blades, Clint Sessions, Darrell Revis, Kennard Cox. Like, it was, they had players, and they were tough. Like, that's one thing I do remember about playing Pitt. But being 4-0 versus Pitt, 
I, I could throw that around a little bit, but now we're in the ACC, no longer playing those same teams in the Big East. So I'm just looking forward to starting a, my own little, you know what I mean, thing here with the wins as far as that goes. The moment when you put on the first pit gear, like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> It, it really wasn't, what am I doing? Actually, this was the first hoodie I put on, and I went and changed just for this today because I'm a, I'm a huge Nike guy. I grew up on Nike. I wore Nike growing up. Sorry about that. So to me, it just feels right. It just feels right. And uh, my wife, she's a Nike person as well, so she's super excited. You know, that stuff that you talk about with, you know, with one says identity. Uh, what have you seen from Pitt's receivers as far as blocking and being physical? And, you know, how did you how have you graded that in the film that you watched them, and what do you see them becoming this year? See, watching the film from last year, they they did a, a good job in the run game. They really did. And uh, what I try to tell the wideouts, when we're running routes or we're scoring touchdowns, the old linemen and the running backs are blocking for us. So in the run game, we have to return the favor. It's it's only right. And uh. That's the, that's the approach we're going to take. If you want to play receiver here at Pitt, you have to block in the run game. And the, the, the run game sets up the pass, so it all works hand in hand. Did Pitt try to recruit you? Did Pitt try to recruit me? I, if it was, if they did, it was very light. It was very light. It wasn't like really heavy or anything like that. I, I never was offered by Pitt. So. <laughs> No doubt, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here now. I'm glad to be part of it now. I may not have been as a player, but as a coach, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I know you're probably spending a lot of time just you know, inundating yourself with the program here, but did you get any chance over like Saturday to watch Bo play, and what were your thoughts on, on his performance and guy that you worked with so long? Man, you know I watched that senior bowl. I had to watch my guy, Bo Mellon. Had a nice little punt return. Uh, saw some practice clips. He did very well. And I, that kid, that, kid, that young man holds a special place in my heart, working with him the last two years and just seeing the growth and maturity that he's gone through on and off the field. And I'm just happy that he's a step closer to his lifelong dream that's of playing in the National Football League. What can a young receiver do to really make a good first impression on you? Say it again. What can a receiver do to make a good first impression on you? What can a young receiver do to make a good first impression on me? Just do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, period. Like, it's, it's not hard, right? Be here on time. Uh, prepare for meetings. Prepare for your lifts. Prepare for walkthrough. Just do the little things, because they all add up. So when you see a, a, a young man come from high school, or he's a younger guy, freshman, sophomore, and he's trying to do the right things, that's, that's all I need is the effort. That's all I need. I'll help you through the transition. I'll help you through everything else. Just just do the right thing, and we could go from there. Oh, man, that's a great one. All right, so in New England, Coach Belichick, he cuts people at the end of the week, every week. So mine just so happened to be literally the biggest game, you know, the Super Bowl. But uh, meeting with Coach, before that happened, he said, listen, uh, we're going to let you go. We're bringing up somebody from the practice squad to the active roster. And it was a, a fellow former college teammate of mine. He was a D lineman, Alex Silvestro. He said, uh, we're bringing Silvestro up, so we have to let you go. But once we win, you'll get the ring. Uh, you'll get the money for it. And we're going to sign you back right after the game. And one thing about Coach Belichick, he's a man of his word. He kept every word. Uh, unfortunately, we lost that game, so the, the money was a little bit less than I thought it would be. And instead of a Super Bowl ring, I now have an AFC championship ring, but Coach Belichick, he kept his word. He really did, and I really appreciate him for that. What did you do? You watched the game in a hotel, or where, where were you? Yeah, so uh, they gave, I had the opportunity to attend the game. I, I didn't want to do that, so I just watched it in the hotel, just rooted for my guys, and it just sucks. Eli Manning throws that pass to Mario Manningham, makes a tremendous catch on the left sideline. And for, for whatever reason, it was their day. So they got the W. It was a hard one to watch for sure. But no ill will there, no, no hard feelings whatsoever. We all know this is, this is a business. So sometimes that's just the way it goes. How has Jordan taken 
working with you and I mean obviously you know he's, he's just trying to get, you know continue his career but mm -hmm. he had such an explosive sophomore year he had a really good freshman year you know coming into a new coach how have you guys interacted with hey like you did this well but let's get let's get to working on these things right so uh, when I met with the receivers one of the first things I said is look I've been in your shoes before you guys didn't sign up to play for me I've dealt with that in college I, I know how you feel right now, but I'm a resource for you guys. I want to elevate everyone in this room. I want to help you be better. Whatever you've done in the past, I want to help it grow even better. So that was my message to him and the entire unit. And like you said, his first two years, phenomenal, like phenomenal. But that's cool, but now what are we going to do from here on out is try to get better period, and it starts with the little things, just doing the little things every day, and gradually th that'll become a lot. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to helping him with this game. Did you have a lot of, so you, take, you dealt with that too, did you have, how many different receiver coaches did you have when you were in college? Uh, my first one was John McNulty. Uh, after that, Robert Jackson, then Kirk Sharaka. So I had three in, in four years, so I, I know how that feels. And at first, you're kind of like, who is this guy? You're feeling them out. And I know they're feeling me out right now, but I'm just going to be open and honest with the guys. And as time goes, they'll, they'll grow to learn who I am. I'm growing to learn who they are. And we're going we're gonna to do this together, man. I told them, I'm not shy about saying it. I want to have the best receiving core in the country, period. And we can do that with the people we have on this offensive side of the ball. We can do that. But to do something great, you have to put in the work. So I challenge those guys. We, we have to put in the work, period. Any final for Coach? You always had the odds on. How far back does that go? Uh, man, this, this dates back to 2011. It actually started as a joke. Uh, two of my really close friends, Jason and Devin McCourty, the McCourty twins, uh, they just dared me, like, bro, you won't get that haircut. That's how it started, and it took off from there. I realized that not a lot of people have this haircut, so I said, you know what? I want to be different. Not, it's not about sticking out, but I want to be different. I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable in who I am. So I've been riding it out. I rode it out as a player. And now as a coach, you definitely don't see a lot of coaches with it. So it helps with recruiting. Anything that's going to help with recruiting, I'm for it. So they're like, oh, man, that's the coach with the high top. Like Once I meet a kid, they're never going to forget who I am. So I look at it as a recruiting tool. Uh, we're still working that out. We're still working that out as far as recruiting area. But like I told Coach, I can recruit anywhere. I can recruit any person, no matter their background, who they are. I'm, I'm a people person. And recruiting is about relationships and being able to speak to people. So wherever they put me, I'm just going to do my job and just try to get the players that fit pit and, and bring them here. Have you found a Pittsburgh barber yet? I have not found a Pittsburgh barber. So if you guys have any recommendations, I can't let just anybody touch this. So I need to see some pictures or some proof that they have skills. But I, I'm going to need a barber for sure. I'm actually going home for my uh, second daughter's birthday. Callie's birthday is the 11th. We're going to celebrate it Saturday. So I called my barber like, bro, I'm coming back. I need a cut because I haven't found anybody in Pittsburgh yet. Jerry, we'll give you <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it's Ty Kwan. Yep, Ty Kwan Underwood. Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate, appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. Really appreciate it.